Every video here on 616 Entertainment is made possible by my supporters over on Patreon. If you enjoy the show here today, consider signing up. You'll get early access, exclusive videos and podcasts and more. Pro Wrestling Tees has the merch. As always, thank you for watching. How you doing, Dan Dans? My name is Ian. Welcome to Mortal Kombat Monday. You know what we do here on this show. We play Mortal Kombat. Today, we're going to play through Mortal Kombat 4 with... Now, this is something we've never done here on the channel. Never played through Mortal Kombat 4 with Liu Kang, and we usually go novice. I'm thinking my balls are a little f***ing bigger today, okay? It's a beginner day. <laughs> we're not getting crazy. We're not going to Master or Master 2. I value your time just like you do. And I'm not going to have you sit through, you know, an hour of me losing. Now, granted, I do not find Mortal Kombat 4 to be nearly as hard as, like, Mortal Kombat 2 or 3. Maybe some do. I certainly don't. But what I do find difficult, and you are going to notice this as this, uh, whoop, as this episode continues, pulling off Liu Kang's fatalities in this game is so fucking hard. You know, normally I do a couple fights for practice before I hit the record button. Uh, at most, I do a couple fights just to get my buttons, as they say. Or as I say. I don't know if that's what they say. Who are they, anyway? Bicycle kick! <laughs> I, it took me over an hour to get even one of Liu Kang's fatalities down. Forward, 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 down block kick, high kick, low kick to do the dragon. And holy Christ, I could not get it to work. Let's try. God damn it. <laughs> First try. <laughs> But you know what? That's a good thing. That's a good sign that I don't know what was going wrong. I don't know if I was standing too far away. I don't know if I was too close. Mortal Kombat 4 is pretty finicky. You know, if they say sweep, if they say jump, if they say close, they fucking mean it. And there is not a lot of wiggle room. So maybe I was just doing something wrong. I also, to be clear, I was initial. Oh, I didn't even see him drop an ice clone. He must have dropped it the instant that I uh, that I came forward. I was going to do this episode with my arcade stick, and that's where the problems started. I couldn't get the fatality with the arcade stick, so I abandoned it. But then I couldn't get it on a controller either. But that's in the past. I guess we are not going to uh, complain about that much longer because it is in the past. But you know what I'm going to complain about? Dan, it's a lot of times I ask you what you're watching, what you're playing. Hold on. Yeah, here we go. It's consistent now. First try nailed it. Second try nailed it. What I'm going to complain about is, you know, a lot of times I ask you, what are you watching? What are you playing? What are you reading? The beautiful Tara Darcy and I went to the movies yesterday. And we go every here and there. I kind of, to be honest with you, I hate going to the movies. And it's not because I don't like the experience of having the, the huge screen and the great sound. That's excellent. I just don't appreciate how nobody knows how to behave anymore. And theater etiquette has gone out the fucking window. Garbage crowd yesterday. But here's the thing. That's not, that's not my complaint. It's not theater etiquette that I'm complaining about today. I've complained about that enough in the past. Today I'm complaining about a movie that... Man, I'm ripping through this game. I'm complaining about the movie that we saw. Late Night with the Devil. You guys know I'm a big horror guy. The beautiful Tara Darcy likes horror films as well. This movie is reviewing so well. It has a 96% on Rotten Tomatoes. I fucking... Hold on. Well, the second fatality is going to take a little more practice. Forward... Ah, I was fucking it up. It's forward, down, down, up, high punch. That's what it is. This movie has a Rotten Tomatoes score of 96% and I fucking hated it. Oh my god, it was so boring to begin with. The opening 25 minutes does not matter at all. No spoilers, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you. The opening 25 minutes as the movie goes on doesn't even matter. Nothing ever comes of it. This Late Night with the Devil literally feels like the writer had an idea for a short film 
they sold the idea, and then they were like, okay, we need uh, we need about 80 other minutes of runtime for this 90-minute movie. And it fucking shows, man. It's just... I, I, you know what? I said no spoilers, so I won't go too far into it. Hold on. Yeah, second one! Nailed it! Fatality. Hell yeah, we've hit both of them now. Now, I didn't do the prison stage fatality there. Maybe I should have. If that's what you were looking for, I apologize. But anyway, back to complaining. <laughs> the movie was boring in the opening. And the more time that I had away from the movie, the more I realized how much I hated it. Here's the thing. There are some fantastic practical effects later on that you haven't seen in a theatrical release in a long time. We're talking straight out of the 80s sort of effects. Again, no spoilers. I'm not even going to allude to what happens. Is it all practical? No. But the stuff that they did practically was very cool. It was cheesy in a good way. But holy Christ, man. I just don't, rec I don't recommend the movie. And I would say... I'm, a, I'm only one person, you know? It's getting rave reviews, but I didn't like it. Tara didn't like it. My buddy Giuseppe didn't like it. Dan Dan in the Discord, Kiko Olvera went and saw it with his wife. Neither one of them liked it. So, hold on. Yeah, dude. So what is this phenomenon that is occurring where all of the reviews are saying that this movie is fantastic, but every single person that I actually know who saw it hated it. What is going on here? <laughs> it's not like on the odd man out. It's not like Midsummer, you know, where that's Ari Aster. I loved Hereditary. I think Hereditary, which was his prior film. I think that's a 10 out of 10. I think it's probably the best horror movie I've ever seen. Is my favorite? I don't think so, but it's probably the best. And then Midsummer comes out, and everybody loves Midsummer, and I did not. And that is me being the odd man out. But I, I'm not the only one that hated Late Night with the Devil. So, anybody who has seen it, feel free in the comments to tell me what you thought of it. And if you loved it, that's fine. I'm actually happy that you loved it. Hold on. I said hold on so that I could get the Goro stage fatality for you here. Hold on. Finish him. Ah! Wins. Fatality. I don't believe I've ever shown off the Goro's layer of fatality here on the channel, which is odd. You would think I would, but I don't think I have. So there was another first time ever. I, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm kind of shocked with how how I'm flying through this. Did I say that weird? How I am flying through this. I don't know, man. After seeing the movie yesterday, it kind of... It corrupted my whole day, you know? I felt demonically possessed by what a piece of shit <laughs> that movie was. And I don't know, man. I couldn't stop thinking about it. Tara and I were at home. We're hanging out with the panda bear. And... It, you know, it would get quiet. The conversation, you know, it winds down. It's quiet. And I just go, man, that movie sucked. <laughs> and I, a big part of it is I think I wanted to like it more than I really did because I like the premise. If you didn't know the premise, it's about a guy who has a late night talk show. And uh, it's Halloween night and he has, you know, some spooky guests on for, uh, for the Halloween episode and shit gets out of hand. You know, that's the, the super simplified premise. When you see it, you'll be like, man, there's a lot he didn't tell us. Yeah, I did that on purpose. <laughs> But, you know, the premise is very cool, and the guy who starred in it, I don't know how to pronounce his name, David Mal Malstashian, David something, you know, he was the, the lackey that Heath Ledger Joker had in The Dark Knight, if you recognize that guy with the dark hair, kind of a handsome guy. Um, this was the first time I've ever seen him, whoop, in a starring role, and I was like, hell yeah, I like this guy, I'm happy to see this. 
I like the setting. Oh, check this out. I love doing this. Six. I left a lot of space between him saying the numbers because I have something in my head that maybe eventually I will use that for a channel, a special channel intro or something. I don't know. I'm letting the time tick down. Why? Just to keep you on the edge of your seat. Get the fuck out of here. You think I'm going to abandon this? I don't think so. What do you think about... I hope you think highly of Liu Kang because he's, he's about to beat Goro. You know what? It's one thing that I didn't like. This whole episode is me just shitting on this movie. <laughs> you know what's one thing I did not like about the movie is in some ways it's almost found footage-esque because it's, you know, the premise is this was Halloween night and they tell you in the beginning, like, this is the tape of the live broadcast that has recently been unearthed. Like, no one's ever seen this footage. So they tell me that. They tell the audience that, and I'm like, oh man, we're gonna see some crazy shit here. This is like the untouched raw tape. But then it doesn't stick to those rules. The movie doesn't stick to those rules, you know? We will be watching the tape of the talk show, and then the host will be like, and we'll be back with Chris Du right after these messages. And then it will switch to black and white, and we continue to see what's happening. We see what's happening during the commercial break, just on set. That's not raw footage from a tape. It's either f raw footage or it's not, you know? And then they, I don't know, they make other decisions that... I guess I could just talk about this movie for <laughs> the whole time. I'll let it go. I will let it go, but please, anybody who saw Late Night with the Devil, get in the comments and let me know what you thought of it. If you did not like it, tell me why. If you did like it, tell me why. I'm not saying I'm an expert. I'm not saying my opinions are infallible, you know? But I'm also not saying that if you liked it, you're gonna change my mind, because I hated it, and that just unfortunately, shit! That, unfortunately, is just the situation. I told you Liu Kang was going to be Goro. Now, we will let go of the movie, and we will focus instead on Shinnok, who is the final boss. He is the final challenger standing in front of Liu Kang here in this playthrough. And what's really odd is... Oh, asshole. I think... This is the first Mortal Kombat 4 playthrough that I've done, not on Novice. This is the first one on Beginner, and I think this is probably the fastest I've ever gotten through the game. <laughs> you know, it really would have been something if I got through scot-free, you know? It didn't take a single loss, but Goro did get us once. And I'm going to blame Late Night with the Devil for that. Um... <laughs> As I will blame that film for all of the world's problems oof, until I, uh, you know, get it out of my mind. But I will not get shit out of my mind until he goes down to a bicycle kick. That was hilarious. That was so fucked up. <laughs> oh, man. Shinnok fades into the blue and orange portal of nothing. Shinnok's menace is over. You are the supreme champion of Mortal Kombat. How do you like that? Record time. This is a pretty short fucking episode. The war is over. I've once again defended my title as champion of Mortal Kombat and defended the realm of Earth. But I have failed to save the realm of Edenia. In doing so, I have also lost Katana forever. Katana? Yes, Liu Kang. It is I. But I thought you were gonna look- With Shinnok's destruction, you have not only saved the Earth, but you've also saved my own realm. For that, I can never repay you. Knowing that you survived is all that I need. As heir to the throne of my realm, I offer you the chance to rule at my side. As King of Edenia, forever. I cannot accept your offer. I belong here on Earth as champion of Mortal Kombat. Then, I wish you good luck, Liu Kang on all your journeys. Goodbye, Princess Katana. Listen. 
when you got a beautiful woman who wants you to rule by her side, it doesn't matter what your other responsibilities are. You go with her! I don't think I have to tell any of you that, right? You guys all understand that, don't you? Man, I'm kind of shocked at how short this episode was. <laughs> Dan Dan's, thank you for watching Mortal Kombat Monday. I appreciate you. We are coming to, uh, you know, we're getting to the end here of Mortal Kombat Monday Season 4. I've already extended it. I'm considering pushing the season all the way until we hit episode 150, which by my count is like six or seven away. We'll see. I'm going to play it by ear. But until then, fuck late night with the devil. <laughs> Thanks for watching. And I'll see you next time.